Hey everybody, how is it going? Happy Friday and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I want to go over some news on CleanSpark and then I want to get into their chart and tell you where I think the stock could be going next. Then after that, as always, I have some other nice looking trades I want to show you and then I'm going to get into some of your questions. Now, if you're new to my channel, I have been trading and investing for over 20 years, and in each video, I will show you trades that I see setting up right now. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing so you don't miss any future trading and investing ideas. And also, if you would like to support the channel and become part of our Patreon community and see what we are buying and selling in real time for a measly $10 a month, that link is in the description. Okay, well, before I get into the charts, I want to go over this bit of news, and it says that CleanSpark rolls out smarter residential microgrid solutions and mobile app MVault. It says that uh, today they announced an update to the ongoing rollout of MVault, the company's smart energy system and companion mobile app designed specifically for homes and small businesses. So I think that this part of their business, well, actually the whole company is getting no love from Wall Street, but definitely this part of their business is getting almost no attention at all. Everybody's focused on the Bitcoining, mining side, and of course that is the most exciting side, but a lot of people are forgetting that this micro grid industry is supposed to grow at about 28% compounded annual growth rate for the entire decade, reading it, reaching an estimated 40% billion so uh, clean spark is doing a fantastic job of creating this product and um, you know taking advantage of this growth that is going to be happening on uh, this side of their business and it says that clean sparks residential microgrid solution and vault is available for california customers with a national expansion to follow so these numbers should continue to keep growing for this side of their business i mean just another under the radar bullish uh, piece of news from CleanSpark. Um, obviously, this is not going to move the needle on the stock price, but man, just a great piece of news. And uh, goes on to say that Envault is built off the same platform as CleanSpark's existing patented Impulse product, which is tough enough for the military and is also flexible enough to be used in commercial, industrial, and estate home applications. And going down the article a little bit more, it says that Envault is a single solution for resilient, reliable, and cost-effective energy for residential properties of all sizes. This system is fully configurable according to the user's needs. So this thing is very flexible. You can see why it is really starting to pick up uh, traction. And it says homeowners can start small and expand the modular system without significant design changes as their goals or requirements grow. MVault enables a system to use power generated from multiple sources, including the main utility, solar, or battery. It also supports storing energy for use during utility disruptions or when economic opportunities exist to lower bills. So this could potentially make you some money or at least save you uh, quite a bit when uh, the utility rates are cheaper. Now, the CEO, uh, Zach Bradford, goes on to say, we anticipate using our microgrid technologies to create cost-effective product offerings which can, can add significant value to the residential energy sector by giving homeowners the choice of power so that they can determine the best application for their individual needs. And you, wouldn't, you, you would have to expect that these systems would also add value to the home as well. But the uh, CEO says that the pandemic made it more apparent how important self-reliance can be by giving our customers the opportunity to generate, use, and store energy with a focus on renewable sources. CleanSpark is committed to supporting that process. So I think uh, this is just another small tidbit of good news for that side of their business. Just another bullish reason to own this stock. I think eventually um, Wall Street is going to notice the hidden gem in CleanSpark. Until then, uh, I'm just going to continue to accumulate this stock. This one is my favorite stock at the moment just because there is so much potential and the stock is going down. Those are usually the ones that I do the best with. And uh, man, I just continue to uh, like the news coming out of CleanSpark. So let's, uh, let's get over to their chart and see uh, how the latest action is cooking. 
All right, well, the first chart I want to go over is Clean Sparks, a daily chart, but honestly, uh, whatever time frame I bring up, there really isn't a whole lot shaking with Clean Spark. It's not doing anything today. It's up a uh, nickel at the moment, so it's basically flat. I added some shares at $10.76, and it's right at $10.77, so basically right where I added. I believe that brought my average cost down to uh, just under $14 a share, give or take. Um, I did sell about $500 worth of premium uh, that's expired today so barring some miracle if, unless it gets over $15 a share before the close I'm going to be uh, collecting all of that premium and I'm going to be holding on to all of my shares as well so that'll come off how much I'm actually down in the stock it's uh, probably down what about uh, 25, 30 percent at the moment, which that's not uh, terrible. And honestly, some of my best investments um, I ended up buying, and then I had to uh, continue to average down because I like to buy stocks when they are going down. I don't like to buy them when they're going up. And the chances of me calling an absolute bottom are pretty slim. And honestly, I don't want to call the absolute bottom because if I do, it's harder for me to add as the stock is going up. I like it when they continue to pull back, and I can add at lower prices. So Clean Spark is working uh, pretty much perfectly at the moment hopefully it doesn't go down forever and it stops soon but um, judging by the way this little four bar cluster is looking I would expect some more downside I think if this thing if this thing breaks 1040 we're gonna see single digits uh, probably pretty quickly and if that happens I'll certainly be adding for sure um, there is no reason to be selling this stock right now um, there's way too much upside in this stock I don't want to be selling anywhere near the bottom I've been in this situation before in fact um, uh, pretty much all of my biggest winners have kind of worked out like this. You know, I had to buy and then average down a little then average down a little again. I mean, one of my biggest winners, I think I was down. Oh, God, what the heck was the name of that stock? It's been so long. I was down about 65% at one point, and it kind of hung around down there for a couple of months. And, you know, I was thinking maybe I should get out of this stock. But the more I looked into it, the more I was reassured that things were on the up and up. And I held on, and then I ended up making about a... 5x on that stock before they got bought out i probably would have made more but uh, you know sometimes it just takes a while and if you're down in the stock and you look into it and you're still liking what's going on with the company there's no need to sell at the lower prices now if, if things change within the company and um, you don't want to be an investor anymore there is nothing wrong with taking a loss and uh, moving on to another trade because you can always use that loss to offset gains in uh, other company or other trades that you make. So, I mean, for me, there's no shame in taking a loss, but that I have no uh, no desire to do that at the moment. And in fact, I think the Clean Spark 2024 leaps the leap calls come out in september if i'm not mistaken and if clean spark is under ten dollars in september when those things come out i am probably going to load the boat on those things uh because if clean spark ends up making it up to you know fifty dollars sixty dollars seventy dollars in the next couple of years those things are going to be worth a fortune i think that is going to be a fantastic opportunity that i am not going to pass up i've been contemplating buying the 2023s but if the 2024s are coming out soon uh, I'm going to roll the dice and see if Clean Spark stays under $10 a share and if it or stays right around this price or goes lower. And if it does, uh, I'm going to be uh, buying some of those uh, leaps for sure. But let's get into uh, some of the other charts I want to show you. All right, well, the first one I want to talk about is Argo Blockchain. And I don't know about you guys, but there was not a whole lot going on, at least for my portfolio today. And it's kind of strange because the market averages were up uh, pretty nicely. And uh, even the IWM was up quite a bit. So I should have had some more action. But for whatever reason, my portfolio is just kind of blah today. And I didn't really see a whole lot going on either. But uh, I think that Argo Blockchain is presenting a pretty decent opportunity. This thing is quite at least starting to carve out a very nice bottom and if the uh, the cryptos continue to remain strong i would expect this thing the way it's setting up to go probably go on a pretty decent run um i think if it breaks above right around two dollars a share this and holds it this thing could be off to the races so i'll be watching this one i actually had an alert on my software to buy it if it came down to this support area and i probably would have uh, bought some of this one if it did but it missed it by about I don't know, a nickel or a dime a share, give or take. And uh, so I might have missed the low on it. Unfortunately, I thought for sure it was going to end up coming down to the support area, but it didn't. And But e any, either way, I mean, this thing is carving out a bottom. 
I don't mind getting in at $2 a share if this thing ends up screaming to 4 or 5 I don't need to capture every last cent out of it. But it is, a, it is awful nice catching the bottom. Makes you makes your ego feel good. But um, I'm definitely going to be watching this one around $2, especially if the cryptos remain bullish. And, uh, and the other one I saw that was quietly making a bottom is BBKCF. Which of course is big digital. This one doesn't look as nice as Argo blockchain, but it is starting to carve out a bottom for sure. It fell below that 200 period simple moving average just for a few days before uh, blasting right back above. And of course, that is a good sign, even though right now it is hanging out just below it. But if it can make one more decent move up, it is going to be above all those moving averages. You can see all the resistance that this thing had trying to get through them. Um, one more big update, and uh, definitely if it closes above 135, it's, it's going to be above all those moving averages, and then it's going to have those as tailwinds instead of headwinds. So big digital is definitely carving out a bottom. Of course, another one is Mara. Uh, Mara, I have been in. This one is... Uh, like I said, continuing to carve a bottom. Um, it did find some resistance at that uh, resistance area that I drew on the chart. I didn't think that was going to be enough to uh, start a multi-day pullback, but it was. But anyway, it looks like it's picking up steam today on slightly above average volume. So that is a good sign. So Mara's looking good. And so is Riot. Riot looks like it's starting to carve out a bottom. It's staying above that 200 period simple moving average. So one more decent move up and it'll be above all those moving averages. And then the only thing it's got to really take out is this resistance right around $40 a share. And if it does that, um, it should be smooth sailing, um, especially, of course, if actually it's probably predicated on the cryptos doing well no matter what so but the cryptos definitely look like they're going to do well so the and these, these things are setting up perfectly to go on an extended run all right well before i close out the video i want to get to some of your questions um i apologize for not getting to too many questions lately i've kind of been forgetting on some but it has been kind of a hassle lately because um the bots on YouTube are getting like so much better than they used to be. I mean, now they're like disguising their cheesy ads as questions. You know, I'm getting them like, hey, Paranoid Profit, you know, can you check out this stock? Oh, by the way, you know, you need to go on Insta check and, uh, you know, because I caught my girlfriend cheating on me, man. This app is amazing. And then you got all the other bots chiming in. Yeah, this app really works. This is great, man. You know what, uh, if that happened, that wouldn't be a great day, so I don't need your app. But uh, if I missed some of your questions, just please leave them again. Actually, leave the, I would say probably leave it in sh as short a question as you possibly can, because uh, ones that usually run on are those, you know, those moronic bot ads. But anyway, uh, I had a question about some of these maritime stocks, and um, man, I bought ship way back here, I remember, and this thing looked like it was starting to break out, then it reversed, and it stopped me out as it broke down below those moving averages, but it looks like it is uh, still trying to carve out a bottom a little bit. Um, it still could end up taking some time, but it is a bullish looking chart at the moment. It's definitely got to get above 130 before it can go on any kind of an extended move to the upside. But the other one was about GLBS. Uh, ship definitely looks a heck of a lot better than this one. This one is in a slow death spiral. I would avoid this one for sure. You know, you don't want to be touching any of these until they start resembling carving out a bottom. It looked like it was sort of doing it right here at the end of June, but then you had that gap down failure. So right now, um, if you did end up buying it right here and you got caught up in this nonsense, you know, this is definitely one you want to get out. Don't, you know, don't hang around and wait for these things to potentially come back, come back. You know, if you get a big gap down like that below all the moving averages, um, just take your loss. And, uh, you know, if the stock does end up um, moving back up, you could, of course, always get back into it. I'm not saying that's um, what is your situation right now, but as far as buying this thing right now, I personally wouldn't touch it. Uh, not un not unless it starts carving out a bottom. But um, the next question was from Dr. K. I thought that was Dwight Gooden back in the day, but I guess not. Or maybe it is Dwight Gooden sending me a question. Who knows? But this one was N-O-K-P-F. Oh, N-O-K-P-F. Um, this one is a very cheap penny stock, uh, seven cents a share. Um, this one I probably wouldn't touch either. This one looks like it's probably going to have to go sideways for uh, 
quite a bit longer. I mean, you never know when these things end up breaking out because it definitely looks like it's under some accumulation. But usually when you see a pattern like this, it ends up having to go sideways for quite a while. Now, if you have some information on this one that it might be taking off, um, you didn't share that. But um, just judging by the chart pattern, this thing looks like it's probably going to have to go sideways for a while. Um, but it's definitely under accumulation. I mean, this is how the patterns usually start before they go on big runs. But this thing might need to go sideways for years. And you don't want to be sitting in a stock like this. Um, you know, with just capital going nowhere. You want to wait for it to break out, hold a little bit of a breakout so this moving average catches up and then start to move out again and then, you know, kind of buy it as it's, you know, jumping off that eight period exponential moving average. And that's when you can catch these things just as they are potentially getting started. Just because they make this pattern doesn't guarantee they're going to take off, but they always seem to make this pattern, this type of pattern right here before they take off. Maybe I can uh, find one in your next chart you were asking about. T A W N F, T A W N F, Thai Airways, and basically the same thing. I mean, this thing looks like it's probably going to have to go sideways for quite a while. It's trading at nine cents right now. So, um, you know, we got some accumulation going on right here, but just by the way it has crashed down and the look of the pattern, you know, this thing could end up going sideways for a long time. So, if you are in this just uh, and you want to stay in it, just uh, realize you might be in for a long wait once it finally does get going, if it finally does get going. Uh, and if you are thinking about getting into it, I would just wait for you know one of these type of moves right here. Let me see if I can zoom in on it a little bit here. It gets hard to zoom in on these stocks that are really cheap. Might not be able to do it here. Anyway, you know, you want this type of pattern and then uh, start to move up and a hold. You know, once you get, if you get that big, uh, fast reversal, then obviously you want to let it go. But if you get a little bit of a hold and this moving average catches up, then that's when you'll notice these things uh, really start to take off. I, God, I had some penny stocks right off the top of my head that uh, I thought were making moves like that that I would like to show you. Let me see if I can find one here. Um, oh, N, N save was one of them. Net savings. Oh. Let's see if I can adjust this chart a little better. Yeah, this is this is what you want to see right here. This is what I was getting at. You know, you, you want a move up, then a hold of those moving averages, and then a nice green candle. This is usually the beginning part of the move. So this is the only time I like to enter those penny stocks. Sometimes you get that extended move up. Sometimes it reverses immediately and breaks through, and then you just take your small loss and look for the next one. But that's exactly what I'm looking for in these penny stocks. Is that's when you can get, you end up getting one of these things that end up might be a big gainer. But, um, you know, sometimes they take a long time to go sideways. Like this one right here. Let me see if I can back it up. I don't want to take this too long here. But this one had to go sideways for many, many years before it ended up breaking out. And you probably had some moves through here that I could zoom in on that look familiar to the two that you are showing me. You know, kind of, man, it's hard to zoom in on these penny stocks. I apologize about this, guys. But, you know, you probably had some moves like this, and, you know, it kind of looked like they were going to take off. You had a bunch of accumulation going on in the beginning, and, uh, you know, this might p catch your interest right around here. But uh, this was, Jan you know, the middle of 2017, and it took all the way to, <laughs> if I can get this thing to work, good lord. You know, it took all the way to the beginning of 2021 for this thing to end up going on a couple of decent runs, you know, so it could take many, many years. So, um, you know, just try to grab them when they're making this little pattern right here or this little pattern right here. And then you can, uh, you know, bypass all that sitting and waiting, you know, and that's that's the only way I buy into any of these penny stocks that are really cheap. I don't get caught up in any of the stories. I'm looking at straight chart patterns on these. Okay, everyone, that is all I have for this video, so I'm going to end it right there. But if you have any questions or comments on any of these stocks, or if you have any other ones you want me to take a look at, please leave it down there in the comment section. I will get to them as soon as I can. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching my video all the way to the end. And until next time, take care, everybody.